Hi guys, welcome back to Camden Studio. In this episode, we are going to focus on the archaeologist's career. Actually, how to choose your specialization, how to choose your path, your direction, where you're going to dedicate your energies, your life, and your research. Are you ready to discover more? Let's go! Okay guys, actually the topic of this video is coming from one of our viewers who wrote us an email at our email address dedicated to this, ask at camnist.org. Do the same if you're interested and we're probably going to answer you on video. So Travis sent us an email which I want to read a few passages because I think they're interesting which offers us the opportunity to go a little more in depth on this topic. Hello, I'm Travis, an American currently in Vienna, Austria. I am very interested in studying archaeology at the University of Vienna, or possibly too big in Germany. Location aside, I have a question about specialization. I have been doing research into the study and profession, with much help from Camden Studios videos. Thank you. We're glad about that. But I have yet to find an answer to how one specializes in archaeology. Would I be focusing on a region or a type of people? When, during my studies, would I have the choice to do that? Is this choice on a time schedule or to my description? That is, how soon into the degree program would one begin to specialize? How does one choose if one did not grow up being an archaeologist? As is the case with myself, I grew up in Texas and I have an interest in its local tribes, peoples and history. But I don't necessarily want to spend the rest of my life in Texas fields simply because I want to travel and use my degree and training in new parts of the world. And I think a lot of people are in the same situation actually. But because I would at some point like to live in Texas again, your homeland, does that mean that I am anchored to studies, its people and lands alone? Since I haven't yet had the opportunity to travel, I don't know Jordan for example, how can I get a taste of that if I want to spend some time working there or specializing in these regions? If I could distill my questions, it would be this. How and when do I choose what area of the world to specialize in? It sounds uninformed upon reading, but I think it sounds that way because I am. This is a very new interest for me. And it goes on a little bit. But I think this really offers us the opportunity to understand uh, the mechanisms uh, inside of you, in your head, and how to proceed along your career. Well, Actually, uh, it's rather difficult to reply because usually you should already have a general idea. In fact, we're going to go through three main steps, not necessarily linked to each other, in order to find your uh, direction, we could say. Well, first of all, a lot of people already have a passion, an idea, uh, an attraction towards a culture, a, a civilization, an area, a region. Like if you mention Jordan, maybe you do have an attraction for that area. So that's already a great starting point. Uh, for example, I remember that my wife was very interested, she's an archaeologist, was very interested in Egyptology, but once she got to the university, she then changed. But her starting point was that. And I think that's important. Even if it changes after time, no problem at all. You're always in time to change. Clearly not if you're 40 years old and you've already got your degree. But while you're, you're studying, absolutely no problem. In fact, a good idea, which brings us to point number two, is to try to go to a field school, an archaeological field school. There are lots of solutions. With universities, even if you're not enrolled yet, or private institutions, at Camnes, for example, we have a, um, a field school in Tuscania. If you want to know more information, you can find the link here below. But apart from that, or you can volunteer, which that will greatly reduce the costs because clearly a uh, field school does have a cost in the end. And a lot of times it also gives you a lot of credits if you're already enrolled at a university. So that's helping your career as well, not only to bring into focus your, your decisions, your passion, but also helping you to proceed in the university career and to reach all the, 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 the amount of credits re requested. 
So that's an excellent idea, really. Uh, I did, for example, I went to uh, Bethsaida, a site in Israel on the Tiberias Lake. That was great. I, I went there for over a month in a kibbutz and that really cleared my idea on the Near East and I decided to continue in that direction. A lot of times it'll clear your ideas that you do not want to do this. I'll, you know how many students came to uh, to Scania through the Lorenzo de Medici program or our own program and they decided that archaeology was just not their, their piece of cake and they decided to do something else. That's always at the same time useful. It's not you have not lo lost your time. Absolutely. So in any way you win because you bring into focus, you try you understand finally what is uh, the right thing to do at a certain point. If you can do, as I said in other videos in the past, uh, in the different types of archaeology, get exposed to all the types, here's a link. It's always useful if you can do different experience. And that's probably a step when you're already studying archaeology. Go to different excavations. So first, as I said, you already have an idea. Point number one, a passion. Or you can confirm that or explore simply archaeology through a field school. Or another point, which usually is the main one, which brings you truly in the direction of your specialization. Because it's not just archaeology. We're talking about specialization where you're dedicating your energies, your research, your studies, and probably your thesis, maybe your doctoral thesis at a certain point, at, in a specific chronology, population, uh, piece of land, part of history, etc., etc. So, how does that take uh, happen? How does that take place? Well, mainly at the university itself, while you're doing your studies. Because if that department has a project, very likely you're going to jump on board, start doing maybe a field school, and then slowly become part of the team, you're a member of the team, and perhaps a part of the materials is going to go in your thesis. You're going to start to study that, that pottery of that period or that architecture or other elements of that excavation project of that context. Which, for example, if we're talking about the Middle East, it offers a lot of opportunities because usually a Middle East, a site in the Middle East includes different types of chronologies. I mean, from the, the Islamic or even more recent strata all the way down to sometimes the Neolithic or prehistoric era. So you have also in that case a huge array from which to choose your, your direction, your path, according to the uh, requests of your professor, of the project itself, etc. Clearly. It could also be something technical, actually. Not only humanistic, not only dedicated to uh, pottery or history or archaeology itself. It could be archaeometry. So uh, you could start to specialize if that's something um, requested by the project or present at the university. Start doing some research and analysis on some residues, on bones, on, uh, I don't know, different types of organic or inorganic materials in the context that need certain analysis. So there are various paths you can start to follow. But the best thing is to jump in a project if you like what they're doing, I mean, if you're more attracted toward ancient Egypt and you just enrolled and in the department there's only a project dedicated to Roman archaeology, that's going to hardly find a good combination. But a lot of times, as I said, like my, my wife, you change the idea because our past is so fascinating and being a part of a team and reconstructing that is so important and you feel part of something that at a certain point sometimes you just put aside your preconceived ideas that you had before arriving to the university and at that point you just follow that flow. Which is a good idea also to do a thesis and all the different degrees, BA, MA, PhD possibly, maybe an academic degree. If you have already a specialization which you can go outside at a certain point but it's going to help you a lot in the university career as a student and perhaps to obtain a position. But at a certain point, you have, I think it's fun to change, to go in a different direction, start studying other things, okay? My recommendation is not to completely 
uh, dedicate yourself to one single topic, very, very specialized, because at a certain point, that's gonna dry out, that's gonna finish. And, and if you don't have anything else to, to, to grab on, to proceed your, in the, your, your, your research or studies, then that could be a problem. So always try to focus on multiple aspects, perhaps con connected with, with, among each other. So I hope I understand. I, I answered the question of Travis. Uh, if not, please you, Travis, or any other people uh, watching this, write your comments here below. We'll try to answer to everyone, no problem at all. And just for a recap, I think it's useful to say don't close your mind on a specific topic or aspect. It's hardly gonna happen, but if you do, just jump in a department that offers a lot of possibilities, that has a lot of projects. That's always the best thing, because then you can decide. Like, for example, when I started in the University of Florence, there was something going on in the medieval department, there was something going on in the Etruscan department, there was something going on in the Roman and Greek department. And I was exposed in the prehistoric department and I was exposed to a few of these. And then I finally decided which direction to take. That's always the best along with a field school. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. What else can I say? Remember that understanding the past explains the present and defines our future. Thank you. Hi, guys. If you want to discover more about archaeology and our ancient past from a different perspective, make sure to click on the Camnus logo here below. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you will never miss an episode and join the archaeological community in search of the truth.